Nice. Oh, yes, big. Big fish. But no matter what you've caught, what, even what you've seen, there is always a bigger fish, a tougher fish. And it's out there. It's out there somewhere. New Zealand is surrounded by open ocean. Much of it reaches abyssal depths, thousands of metres deep. This deep water off the continental shelf can be relatively close to the coast, making it possible for intrepid and well-prepared anglers to explore. Even the mighty Broadbill swordfish that spends its days in the darkness half a mile beneath the surface can be caught in a small boat by anglers out for a quick weekend fish. From away, good too, mate, and not many people tag those. Congratulations, mate. <laughs> Thank you very and we've even had encounters with giant squid that have come up out of the deep to devour marlin whole and spit out the remains like a chicken bone. Now, just looking at these bites, there's some squid seeking this fish. But it's not just a monster game fish way down there in the deep. There's an incredible range of fish that live in these waters. Many of them, fantastic eating fish and tough fighting sport fish, like the hefty bass that can grow to over 200 pounds and pull like a tractor. And in the deep, wherever there's an undersea volcano or a seamount that rises to within a couple of hundred metres of the surface, we find kingfish in their hundreds. And these brutes will test any angle. Oh, yeah. It was a tough fight. Taking line out. Catching these fish in the deep is a challenge, but filming them in these extreme depths is even tougher, particularly when you're on a tight budget. Tell us what's down there, little camera. But we've made a camera rig that we've been attaching to our line and dropping to the depths, and we've been discovering exactly what's happening down there in the deep, dark depths. Oh, they're hitting it. So today, we've got our deep drop camera along with a pile of fishing gear, and we're heading offshore to a legendary deep sea location off the east coast of New Zealand. And we're taking along a fan of our show so he can experience what it's like to eat, sleep, and breathe fishing aboard our expedition vessel, the Cascade. Now the fella up there grabbing his gear out, his name's Bevan and he's a father of two from Tawamudu. He's a fan of our Facebook page and he has won a competition to come fishing with us. Hey Bevan. Not bad mate, Seth. Nice to meet you mate. Nice this is Bozzy. Nice to meet you. This is, too, nice to meet you. This is yeah. Mike from uh, Hunting and Fishing. Yeah, Mike, how are you? Well, jump aboard mate, yeah. this is home. Thank you very much. This is going to be home for the next few days. Sounds great. Yeah, the Mangere classic vintage. I knew that'd be the go-to bomb. <laughs> well, while we're travelling, we've got some skippy lures out to catch some bait and, uh, and some marlin lures because uh, while we're travelling across this ocean, we might catch some marlin. And speaking of which, have you ever caught one? Never caught a marlin, Matt. How about a big kingfish? Would you like to catch one of those? I'd love to catch a big kingy, Matt. How about a uh, blue nose, a bass, or a harpooka? Never caught any of those, so uh, it's on my to-do list. Well, it is a good thing because where we're going, all of the aforementioned fish are a very real proposition. Because where we're heading is the Ramfurly Banks. I know Bevan is going to have his mind blown by the fishing at the Ramfurly Banks. And there's very good reason why it's such an epic fishing location. First off, it's remote. It's over 100 nautical miles from our port in Whakatane. And it's rough. It is exposed to the southerly winds and swells that come straight up from the Southern Ocean. 
and when the wind and swell meets the extreme currents on the bank, it makes for a very rough sea. But it's these same currents that bring in the nutrients that kicks off the food chain and sustains so many large predatory fish. So we're going to need plenty of bait. Big baits, like whole skipjack tuna, that we hope to catch along the way. Yep, yep, there he goes. It's a little Williamson feather jig. It's pretty hard to beat those little Williamson lures. Nice big fatty too. There you go. Caught one of those before? Uh, we'll stand closer to the bungee line, mate. You might get the catch one. Yo, got him on! Oh, oh yeah, first tuna. How was that experience for you? <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be feeding those whole to another fish that you might be able to catch. That'll be a new experience for you. Yep, yep got him on. Oh, got him on over here, too. Beautiful baits. Just a little workout, mate. Looks like again, it's going on in front of us, so uh, go have a little bit of a look over there and see what's under them. Might be a monster. Looks like pillies. Oh, and dolphins here too. Boys, there's going to be tuna here. Oh. We're just hauling them in, just like this. Just a neat little fish, the skipjack tuna. We've got loads of skipjack tuna for bait, but as our voyage takes us into the night, we stop to catch some kingfish baits, jack mackerel and flying fish. That is a great bait. So with quality fresh bait on board, anticipation is high, and we managed just a couple of hours sleep before we continued our voyage to the legendary Ranfilly Banks. Well, en route to the Ranfilly Bank this morning, on the Fruno we've come across a bit of foul, a bit of a hill, it's got some marks on it. So we've decided that it's time for Bevan to catch his first harpoka, or first bass, or first blue nose. So this is the rig here, mate. Okay. Circle hook. And you just want to be keeping that sinker in touch with the bottom. Yep. There you go, you're away. Three ball, all the way down. 200 metres. 200 metres. You know, um, Bevan, yep. the trick is when you start getting bites, don't do the big strong. Yep. Yeah. 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 Circle hooks, mate. Hello, getting bites straight away, mate. Oh, yep. Here you go, hey. Ah, oh, bugger, I'll wind him in. So now this is where the real hard graft begins, you know? This is where you really earn your feet of fish when you're poker fishing. Oh, yeah. It's really starting to fight now. It'd be nice for the old mate, Bevan, to get one, though. Nothing like a first fish. And a half is a pretty special one if you've never caught one before. Hey, seriously, you, you've never fished here before, Mike? Just came across a bit of sign. I love that. First fish in a new spot, I love it. And it's a genuine poker, and he took the live bait, eh? We're staying up to half past three in the morning, catching them puppies then, by the looks. Oh, yes. What did I say? I'd be happy with about a 12 kg poker. would be perfect for me. Perfect size. Oh, better than I thought, actually. Beautiful. Well done, Matty. Sweet, mate. We're on the board, mate. We're on the board. There's nothing like some runs on the board. One of those to start with. Beautiful. Right. Here we go. Let's see what's down there. Uh-oh. Right. <laughs> yeah, I've been bit. I've been bit on that big bait. Oh, slightly better than a rat, maybe. But take it back into a rat. So to catch up with the latest tips and techniques, as well as our latest fishing action, check out ultimatefishing.tv and download the Ultimate Fishing app so wherever you go, you've got access to our entire catalogue of tips, rigs, techniques and location information. And it's all available free at ultimatefishing.tv. Right boys, got a sign down here, let him go, eh? Oh, there you go, Mike. Watch, the, watch that big strike, Feather Chucker. Good bites here, mate. 
I think so. There he goes. Got him. Yeah, bro. Yeah, here you go. Good stuff. Oh, yep, that was a bite. Oh, bait's getting harassed, my bait. Crank him up, mate. Get him off the bottom. Yeah. Oh, he's pulling line. Oh, yep. Here you go, hey. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, we're all hooked up. We're not even at the rim filling yet. We've got to get this into the rod hole. This is too hard. Oh, no. <laughs> right, go and check on these fellas. A little bit of colour coming up here, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there he goes. Right out. I'm happy, bro. Sweet as. <laughs> it's a nice eater there, Mike. Beautiful. I thought just while I'm fighting my half hooker, or... I don't know exactly what it is that I'm hooked up to. So I'll just come down and see, um, be part of this meritorious occasion. Bevan's first poker, potentially. Or perhaps shark. What do you reckon? I mean, if these turn out to be pokers, they'll probably be looking pretty good. Yeah, definitely, mate. We've got a couple on board now, so um, we'll go and chase some kingies and uh, see if we can take a few more boxes for Bevan here. <laughs> see, see if we can bend them over the rail with the big kingfish. <laughs> I'm glad you qualified that with Big Kingfish. Yeah, <laughs> I was starting to get a bit worried, eh? <laughs> what have we got? What have we got? Oh, it's a kingfish. <laughs> what do you say about going kingy fishing, Mike? Found this new kingy spot, bro. There you go. That is over 200 metres down. The other day, we were catching them in two or three metres of water, right up in the shallows. From 200 and... 20 odd metres down, and hopefully we'll be seeing plenty more of these. Bigger ones. Oh, look at that, he's smoking them. That's the good thing about these kingfish, eh, Matty? Pretty hardy, 220 metres, mate, in the water and she's gone. Pretty remarkable, you know, yeah. like, all of that barometric change, the pressure yeah. change that it's going through, and they can handle it, you know, and just see that fish just powered away. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. And still, a little boy waits. I mean, what would you do, you know, if you just come out here and caught one straight off the bat? You'd be drunk by now. They're actually not bad eating these uh, grey boys. Grey boy, that's what they call them down south, eh? Yep. Or, or tote shark, school shark. Yeah, well, there's a commercial industry for them. So we might just um, slide them on back so our um, commercial brothers can catch them and make a bit of money. Well, I reckon with those sharks showing up, it might be best to move on for a kingy. So, mate. You might just have to wait a wee bit, Bevan. That's all right, eh? It's fishing. This time, Bevan has missed out on catching his first half hooker. So now, we're going to the Ramphilly Bank to try for his next fishing goal. A kingfish over 25 kilograms. Which is easier said than done, because these brutes are tougher than any of the fish on the reef, because they can destroy the tackle of even the most experienced and well-prepared anglers. Got a fish on the sound of there. Now we've got to look around, see if we can hook one. Now we've decided that we're gonna start bevin off fishing for kingfish with the old favourite jig, the Williamson Bentos 300 gram. Now you've never done any mechanical jigging never, before. Haven't done any mechanical jigging, right. Matt. It's not as tricky as it looks. So uh, we're just gonna drop that down. We've got some rainbow braid on there that changes colours every 10 metres. So that way, see, we're on our 20th metre now. Okay, so I've gone down just past 30. I'm just gonna dig that back up, and there you go, and you hook up just like that. And that's how you hook a kingfish on a jig. It's like that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get long to show you the technique. Now, that's just one of the things you gotta deal with with uh, kingfish, particularly jigging. There's small fish there, you've gotta weed your way through them, and the big one's gonna come along. Okay, have a go at that, eh? Yeah, that's it, that's it. Almost. You'll get there, but you've got a kingy on. You've got to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I felt about the first couple yeah, of Yeah, I know. Can be a problem. So, while there's these rats here, it'll give you good practice before we perhaps move on to somewhere where there's some bigger ones. Yep. Little rats hassling my live bait at the moment. There you go. Tighten up if you have to. Tighten up. Tighten up. Put your thumb on the spool. Put your thumb on the spool. 
That's a real one, mate. Go, go forward, go forward, follow your fish, I'll come with you. Upset the fish's swimming pattern, mate, by using the rod. Short stroke, that's 80 pound gear, that's strong as gear. Oh, man. Does it feel like he's still swimming or is he in the ground? I don't know, are you moving him? Move him, move him, keep him moving. Yeah, we've got him moving this way now. There you go, what were we saying? Little rat kingfish, little rat kingfish. This is no little rat kingfish. Hopefully everything holds together. Oh, oh that's a real problem. Oh. Man. <laughs> what do you think of mechanical digging so far? Oh, it, is awesome. <laughs> it works. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, your typical ram fairly weather, really, and that's why there's so many fish here, because if it was beautiful, flat, calm seas and nicely accessible, I'm sure there wouldn't be so many fish here. Start working your way back, mate. Keep whining as you go, keep whining as you go. Oh, just don't, maybe back off a little bit now. Now, while that rod there looks light, and it's got a heck of a bend in it, that is a Shimano Blue Rose jig rod. It is designed for 80-pound tackles. So to give you some idea, this thin braid here, the Suffolk's Rainbow Braid, is as heavy as the monofilament that's on those big game fishing reels up there. So we're talking about some serious strain going on here. Isn't that right? Oh, it certainly <laughs> is, mate. <laughs> now, the important thing too is with the old jig, that hook can be tearing a hole. Yeah. And because the jig's heavy, if he shakes his head, the hook can come out. So you just got to keep everything nice and tight. The boat rocking up and down, use it to your advantage. Get another one, get another one. No, we're, we're okay for now. Oh! oh Run to the ground. <sighs> that, was, that was a donkey, bro. Bro. That was, uh, that was not your 25 kilo one nor your 30 kilo one, that was your bigger again. So far, Bevan has struck out on his pooker and now lost a big kingfish. So that, that, was, uh, that was a trip maker right there. It's a hard lesson learned, but fortunately, we've got plenty of time to turn it around. And let's not forget, we're at the Ramfurly Banks. No worries, Bev, we'll get you one, mate. We'll see you're right. <laughs> Now hopefully that'll be a bit much of a mouthful for those smaller kingfish. Oh, bait's getting harassed, my bait. Yeah, I've been bit. I've been bit on that big bait. Better, better fish? Nah, not the greedy rats eating our biggest live bait. Oh, slightly better than a rat, maybe. I take it back, it's not a rat. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> it's always thick and fast out here at the Ram Philly. No complaints there. Let's roll them over then. That's a little bit better. Oh, he's a fatty. Here he goes. Thank you, mate. It's like a constant state of being hooked up here. And it's just a case of fishing until you can't fish anymore. And along the way, you're going to get some real beauties. I'm just sort of letting my bait down, and they seem to be up at about that 40 metre mark. Okay, my bait's been picked up now. It's slowly increasing that drag. Move from my gimbal bout, that circle hook should be rolling into the corner of the mouth. Boom. And we're hooked up. And this gear here, definitely overkill for the size of the kingfish I've got on at the moment. But you never know when that 30 kilo plus one's gonna come along. Better than what I thought it was. There you go, thanks, mate. Maybe, well, last maybe one. a little bit better than the last. Oh, look at his tail. That guy there, at some stage in his life, has had an encounter with a shark. We were just talking about how hardy these kingies were, eh, Mike? And look at this. He's barely got a tail, and yet look how thick and bulky he is. He's a tough bugger. We want him in the gene pool, so let's get him back out there, eh, mate? Oh, yeah, I'm bit. It's just instant. These guys love double hook up on the jigs. OK, you're underneath me, mate. You're underneath me. Come this way. Pull your fish down, mate. The ram curly just Another thingy. Feisty little beggar. We've been fishing not 30 minutes, and we're probably up to 10, 12 kingfish. Gosh, I don't know. We're going to lose count real quick here. Well. A little bit of rat kingfish avoidance. Nice big old flying fish. 
I'd eat it if I was a big piggy. Now with this big flying fish being dead, of course it's nice to put a little bit of action into it because of course we know how well the jigs work, how well the live bait works, it triggers that attack instinct. But of course, I've got a circle hook in there, so it's not like hooking up on a jig. So what I do is I put on just enough drag that I can wind line. And I lift the rod and wind, lift the rod and wind. And as I do that, I'm clamping down with my thumbs on the spool. Just enough to get me a little wind each time. Now when that gets grabbed, I can just stop winding, let go, and that line will run out and allow that great big flying fish to be swallowed by a kingfish. It's like dead bait jigging. Here we go. And oh, I think I just hit a nut. Now let it go again. Back to free spool, and he's grabbed it again. <laughs> Obviously, he's not quite up to the size to eat that big flying fish. Slowly increase the drag pressure. And oh, got him. Oh, yes. There you go. Holy smokes. Woohoo! Just woke up when he saw the boat there. Oh, yep, they're getting better. Here we go, boys. This guy, I mean, a kingfish is capable of swallowing a bait up to a third of its body length. And while this is a big, fat kingfish, the bait that I used was probably one third of its body length. Oh, there's a better one there. The last one. Right. Nice work, Bev. Right. Probably the best one on the jig for the day. A couple of quick picks of this guy. Sweet. Okay, buddy. He's a deep set fish, heavy fish. Might have to stay up all night again tonight and scoop up some flying fish. The trip's off to a good start, but we've still got some boxes to tick for Bevan. Oh, yeah, boy. Fortunately, the Ranfilly Banks turns it on for us and we get even more than we bargained for. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't hold it. Might drop the camera down. And we send a camera deeper than we ever have before to see what's lurking on the deep drop offs of the Ranfilly Bank. Uh oh, it's being hit. Something's trying to eat the camera. I tell you what, it's exciting when you see something smash it like that, isn't it? We're on a fishing expedition out to the Ranfilly Bank, where we hope to not only catch some of the monster fish that live in the depths, but film them hundreds of metres below the surface. And for this trip, we offered our fans on Facebook a chance to come along. And we got this guy, Bevan, a landscaper by trade and a good, keen Kiwi bloke who loves his fishing. It's an awesome experience, I'll tell you that much. His goal for the trip is to catch a half hooker from the deep and one of the big kingfish that the Ramfilly Bank is famous for. I'm going for the uh, bigger bait, the flying fish, for a bit of flying fish jigging. Here we go, more boy. Oh, the flying fish got picked up on the drop that time. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, busting up on the surface here, look. Right next to us, look. Something's chasing bait on top. Oh, kingies, look. Kingies racing down the wave. Woohoo! Look at them. Right up on top. Mean. He's caught a fatty. And he ate that flying fish as it was dropping, just absolutely scoffed it. Okay. Another one. No camera even here. Click, click. There they are. Oh, look. Oh, Dave, there you go. There's your money shot. You getting the hang of that, boy? Yeah, mate. You getting the hang of that? Slightly bigger than the last rat. There you go. Uh, looks like we're going to have a triple hookup very shortly. And you know why I know we're going to have a triple hookup? Because we put three baits out, which means you're going to hook three kingfish. Pretty much. Just like that. See that there? That bend in the rod? Yeah, that's kingfish. Oh, yeah. So the current's making these waves sort of really stand up. But uh, when you're catching kingfish like this, you barely notice. Another one right here, look. Off standard, mate. Away he goes. Job done. Next. Another bait. And the wind is getting up. 
Get ready, mate. That bait is gonna get smoked. Hey. Oh! Ease it up, ease it up, ease it up. Yeah, you got him. Oh, yep, yeah. there you go. Nice, nice work, bro. Nothing wrong with that one. Sweet as. Nice work, that fella can go home. Oh, look, flying fish. Look at that, flying fish. Now, given that flying fish has been chased by something, <laughs> I reckon if I chuck the stick bait out, something's going to try and eat it. Let's have a look, eh? Oh. All goes in the water. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, they're on it. They're all over it. They're all over it. We've got him. Oh, he's only a rat ski. No, no, on that one. flatten all the barbs, so hopefully he'll fall off. There you go. There go. That's how we like to release them little rats. Oh, look at them out there. Look, they're on it already. The second that it lands. We haven't got them on. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I'm playing around with these kingfish on top water gear because we've saved the last of our baits for Bevan to give him the best possible shot at his big kingfish. Oh, hello. There you go, let's come back. Come on, eat it. Oh, yep. Yeah. You got him. Yep, yeah, tighten up. There's plenty of kingfish around, and fishing here, sooner or later, a big one's going to show up. Up to the corner, mate, all the way. And when you hook him, you've got to put the brakes on and stop them getting to the reef. Yeah, boy. Maybe some thumb pressure too. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just keep it nice and smooth. Bro, this is choice, bro. <laughs> oh, look at that. That is a nice thing. That is a nice fat ram fully bang skinfish, mate. Well, there we go. These uh, picks that we're taking here, we can actually get cell reception back at Hicks Bay. I'll go straight onto Facebook. You guys watching it on TV, this is old news. Keep up with the play on Facebook, and be like Bevan, and win the opportunity to come fishing with us. Work it, bro. Oh, too easy. Cheers, man. <laughs> Bevan's getting closer to achieving his goals for the trip, but we now have just one more day to catch him as big kingfish and get his harp hooker. And I still need to get my camera rig down to the depths to see what's lurking beyond the drop off. So here's hoping for a big day tomorrow. I'm excited. Got a good feel. I got a good feeling about today, Bev. See us calm. We're at the Red Philly Banks. Got some good company, great boat. Let's get amongst it. Yeah. The scene is set for Bevan to catch a big kingfish. Okay, boys, where you go? But right now, we're going to try and get him his first ever hard hooker. Three very big baits going down to the depths. We're hooker fishing. Someone's trying to eat it. Go on, eat it. Oh, oh that was a proper bite. A proper bite. Yep. Sure do. Take your line out. Away from the bottom. Oh. We'll go manual, eh? Just going manual styles. Just, just showing my manual rod brothers down there that I'm with them. <laughs> so I just spend so much time trying to hook up. Might as well enjoy it. Now, of course, you can use these reels manually, just like any other reel. And you've got the counter on there, so I can see I've only got 46 metres to go. Well, you can do a bit of both. You can turn the motor on. When there's a lot of load, you can actually wind to help it. Like so. OK, it's going to go this way. The line's going this way. I've got... Oh, there's a shark following him up. Blue shark. And what did he go for? The live mackerel. Oh, nice pooker. Oh, little shark right there. Look at him. 
trying to keep him away from that shark. Look, there's a shark right here behind you, Dave. He's, we should be all right now. Oh, it's a nice fatty. He went for the live jack mac. Yeah, boy. Happy with that. Thanks. Now, this here is a legal sized turkey. Now, you may think that's quite a big bait to be using. This is by no means a huge pooker. And look at that. Comfortably fits in there. And this is probably a good way to show you how these circle hooks work while you don't strike. Big bait in there, slowly increase your drag. And as that hook comes out, look at that, it rolls every time when you come slowly. If you, if you strike fast, it pops out. That is why we don't strike with circle hooks. And that is why big baits aren't a problem when you're talking about catching these guys. <laughs> There's some stunning eating right there. Oh, I might think I might have to sit this next one out. <laughs> might drop the camera down, see if we can film, film some pookers down there. Yeah, boys, catch up. Oh, here we go. There we go, here we go. All they needed was a bit of a rack up. Come on, Bev. Like oh, yep. Bev, Bev's on as well. Yeah. Oh, we're into a school of them. Right, I'm going to uh, rig up our super deep drop cam. And we're going to take a look below the surface, deeper than we've ever been before. It's important to get these fish off the bottom as soon as you get them, get them hooked up, because otherwise they're going to go straight to the bottom and bust you off. Ooh, it's a goodie too. Come on, fuckers. Come on. Uh, slightly larger than a brown trout, bro. Happy with that. Woohoo, stoked. Trying to keep him away from that shark. You don't want your first pucker to be donated to Mr. Shark. Here comes your colour. It's your pucker, it's shark right after him. Shark's right after him. It's a nice one too, mate. Shark's in behind. Oh, that's a nice pucker, boy. Yeah. Woohoo! What a way to get off the board for your first pucker. Yeah, mate! <laughs> What a fish. Shit, what a fish, all right. Nice big fat pucker, that one. Now, this one's a genuine pucker as opposed to the bass. You do get all three main varieties of your deep water fish here, the pucker, the bass, and the blue nose. My personal favorite to eat is the pucker, which is exactly what we've got three lovely specimens of here. The other there, you there you go. Yeah, boy. There you go, there's his pucker. Right, bro. Just... Look at, he's giving it the trout pose. <laughs> the smile, boys. Yeah. First drop wonders, eh? Awesome. Right, here we go. See what's down there. How deep are we, mate? Still saying we're 118. Good, I reckon we can handle 118. Come down, down, down she goes. What shall see? Dunno. <laughs> <laughs> See our camera going down the bottom there. We've got some, uh, some hooker on the bottom there, so not too far away, mate. And we'll see what's down there firsthand. Well, second hand from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> get a bite, get a bite. Oh, that's the bottom there. We don't want to get them snagged, but it'll just drag it up just a wee bit. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Never so much if I wanted to get a bite from a pooker and I don't even have a hook on. It'd just be interesting to see what the bottom looks like down there too. Oh, is that a bite? Oh, yep, that was a bite. Uh oh. That was white. <laughs> that was straight in the hook out of that one. Yeah. Oh boy, he's getting bites on it. Hopefully both those baits got smoked off. Oh yeah, oh, 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 oh! oh. Yep, there goes the other bait. Oh, what are they? Well, we're about to find out. Both baits gone. Yep. Torch is still going. Yeah. Camera's still rolling. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> oh, this is more exciting than actually catching one, isn't it? When our camera drops beyond 90 metres, it gets noticeably darker as we go through a layer of sediment that sits about 15 metres from the bottom. This is perhaps the layer of clutter that you often see on your depth sounder on or near the bottom. 
And amongst the sediment is the popular table fish, the tarakihi, and lots of them. But our baits are too big for their small, delicate mouths. But their even tastier cousin, the much larger trumpeter, has no trouble eating the bait. Wherever our baited camera drifts through areas with rock or coral on the bottom, there is plenty of life, mostly tarakihi and mau mau. So it stands to reason there'll be bigger fish here that eat them. We have no hooks in these baits, but you can see that this harpuka refuses to let go. And here, as we go even deeper, we see the harpuka can attack with surprising speed. It comes in fast from below and inhales the bait, giving us a rare insight into how these fish hunt in the dark of these extreme depths. OK, let's go again now, guys. being hit. Oh, it's been hit on the way down. Probably a shark. Uh oh, we've got to get it in. The camera's getting hit at 40 metres. Something's hitting it. Oh, hitting it again. Uh oh. Uh oh, something might be tangled up in it. Oh no, we don't want to lose our camera. 40 metres down. Something's, something's on there, I think. Someone is hammering it. Only 40 metres below the surface and that's Stopped. The camera stopped and started getting smashed. Yep, something smashed the, the rig off. Woohoo! All will be revealed, I guess. It's all still rolling. Oh, he's, he's into one straight away. Look at that. As soon as it gets down there. Oh, that camera should be getting a bite. Come on. Look at time. What have we got? What do you know? Another beautiful oh, poker. Beauty. I'm happy with well that. Well done. How many is that for you today? That's my second one today, Matt. Second one today. Well, your limit's three. But I'm, I'm thinking with, with the amount we've got, we'll uh, do the old limiting our catch rather than catching our limit because the day is still but a pup and we're at the Ranfilly Banks with weather like this. Sweet. OK, mate. Okay. Photos taken and now straight in on ice. That's another beauty of being on board a boat like this with such a decent fish hold. OK, Dev. Hook it done. Now let's get to that big bad kingfish. Woo -hoo. OK, now I figure that even those medium-sized kingfish, the sort of 18, 20 kilo ones eating the big flying fish, I'm going to go for a dead stick, skipjack turner. I'm going to try and jig that around down there and uh, see if that doesn't get past those small and medium-sized kingies and get the attention of the horse. <laughs> Maybe a donkey or possibly a pig. I know there's plenty of kingfish here big enough to engulf this bait, but I also know big kingfish aren't the only big predators at the Ramfilly Bank. Oh yeah, I've been bit. I've been bit. Someone's picked it up. Gonna have to give him heaps of time to eat it. Yep, he's got it. Oh yeah. Oh, I can't hold it. This is my drag as I've got. Oh no! Ah, I burnt my fingers. Give us a need some glove. Got pressure. Walk backwards on the deck. <laughs> oh, it's not fighting like a kingy. It's just the way it's coming coming up to the surface, I think. It's probably a blooming shark. That first run though, I just thought, oh man, we've hooked the donk. You ready to catch me when this um, shark bites through the line, Mike? I got you, mate. I got you. Oh, I might have to go down here. Oh, I've got a bit of angle to work with here now. A bit better. Looks like a shark. That's a big bronzy. Just pinch it up. I'll keep waiting on behind you. 
Oh, look at him. He's a beauty. It's a decent one. There you go, and he's gone. Nice, clean release. <laughs> a little bit of action and excitement. Good. Some big boys down there, eh? Hit on the drop. Slowly increasing that drag. And we're hooked up. There you go, it's come back. Oh, yep. You got him. Oh. Oh. Looks like the old mate's on a good one over there, though. Hold on to him, that's a goodie, boy. Now we're going to come together, I think, too. Come this way, come this way. Uh, under, you're under, you're under. I think Bevan was using about the smallest live bait in the tank. I'm using a whole flying fish. Looks like I've got a little one on. Got a big one on. It's kind of blown the whole big bait, big fish theory, hasn't it? I love those circles, don't you? Now that guy there took a whole flying fish. Bevan's one who literally used a little wee live bait, the size I'd use for a little snapper. We used to think of me. The size of his fish, it looks like a blooming good one. Not that there's anything wrong with that fish, it's just it. that one's better. Oh, and the boys are doing the ram furly shuffle. Oh, and Mikey's got a good one too, boys. The ram furly shuffle. It might, might take on like Gangnam Style. <laughs> oh, yeah, go, boy. <laughs> no, he's not that big, eh? But he bloody fought, fought hard. Oh. Keep him coming, man. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. Ooh, looks like something's chewing it. Give it heaps, give it heaps. <laughs> Is that you, Well, what happens if you uh, take too long with these fish sometimes, you get the old bitey. Yeah. We'll come and have a chew on them. Yeah, they make pretty oh. sure work of the kingy, so we've got some colour down here, it's not too far away. That's a better fish too, boy. That's getting yeah, close buddy. to the best one for the day. Oh, 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 oh. fish. Oh, 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 oh. Big... Yeah, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> I think you might have just got yourself a PB kingfish right there. Yeah, mate, Fish. Hold that one up, mate, because that is well worth a photo. That's the fish of the day by a long shot. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> awesome, bro. Hey. Do you want to get the measuring mat, someone, please? Yeah, oh, I'm right on the end there now, 121. That is a thumper, boy. Woo. Oh, we got loads of photos, which is going to be a trophy that you better remember forever. Not that you're going to forget this, mate. Send them home. Your first brand fairly experience. Woo. You get the fish. All right, mate. Well done. If you've enjoyed this episode of Ultimate Fishing with Matt Watson, chances are you're going to want to see some more. Well, we've got you covered at ultimatefishing.tv, where we've got fishing action filmed from all around the world. Big boats, small boats, all kinds of tackle and fish advertising free. It's all covered at ultimatefishing.tv or you can download the free Ultimate Fishing app.